Narmaya is by far the most popular character in the game and naturally the most requested for my guides. And that's for a couple of good reasons. She's by far one of the strongest characters in the entire game, capable of reaching upwards of 40 million damage with ease, with her fun and intricate playstyle of swapping between stances to increase her damage output. There's a lot to keep track of with Narmaya, and despite her kit not being too complicated, she has plenty of things to optimize, so in this video I will be showcasing my endgame build for Narmaya, going over all the recommended combos, weapons, sigils and overall optimizations, as well as a neat little trick so that you never fail to nail Narmaya's special timing and can get the most out of this character and her build. With that being said, hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero and welcome back to another build guide video. You guys have been asking for this one for a very long time, and so in this video I hope I can showcase just how powerful Narmaya is and teach you all of the small little tricks that she has available in her kit. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So Narmaya's main mechanic is Butterfly Effect, the ability to swap between the Dawnfly stands, where all of your attacks become highlighted with the color pink, and you can even see the pink butterfly, and the Free Flutter stands, where all of your attacks become highlighted with a blue color by pressing the heavy attack button that is the triangle or Y button on your controller. And depending on your stance, Narmaya's combos are going to vastly differ, with her combos in the Dawnfly stance, which I will hereby start calling as the pink stance, being much more AoE focused and also having a charged attack that covers a wide area that deals a lot of damage after charging it up. On the other hand, the Free Flutter stance, or what I will call the Blue stance, is all about doing multiple rapid strikes that are focused on a single target. Similarly to Yodarha, Narmaya gains a special resource when she performs these combos. In her case, it's the butterflies that you see flying around her, which you can have up to 6, and they will enhance Narmaya's skills based on how many she has available. When in the blue stance, you'll be able to gain butterflies whenever Narmaya finishes this combo where she spins multiple times, and while in the pink stance, she will be able to gain butterflies by performing this rapid combo at the very end, and in the pink stance, Narmaya will be able to gather butterflies by performing a charged attack, like so. Though I am sure many of you were able to spot a flashing light on the target dummy whenever I was performing these combo finishers, so right there at the very end of my spinning attack, whenever you see Narmaya start spinning, you're able to press the triangle button at the right time to swap into the pink stance and gain even more butterflies. And the same thing goes whenever you're performing the charged attack while in the pink stance. Whenever you perform it, whenever you see Narmaya flashing, if you press the triangle button at the right time, you'll be able to swap stances, which will not only deal an attack that deals extra damage, but will also give you more butterflies. A very important thing to note about the pink stance is that these basic attacks can be used as a little bit of a gap closer, as they do cover quite a bit of range, and since doing the charged attack takes up a very long time, if you want to accelerate it and make it charge faster, you can actually do the basic combo, and at the very end you hold the button to be able to charge much faster, and then of course you can swap into the blue stance. And also while you are in the blue stance and you fully finish the combo, and then swap into the pink form. If you hold the charge button, you'll be able to charge much faster again. And these combos are actually infinite, you can keep on stringing between them, as long as you keep on hitting the timing to press the triangle button at the right time. Like so. Now there are a few extra ways for you to charge up your long charged attack with Narmaya much faster. For example, if you use the skill before, like let's go ahead and use Transient, and you hold the charge button, you'll be able to charge it much faster. And also if you perform a link attack, you'll be able to follow it up with a perfectly charged charge attack, which will be much faster. And of course, these link attacks will also provide you with more butterflies. Another very cool thing about Narmaya's charged attack is that after you see that she flashes for the first time, if you've released the button at the right time, like I did right there, you'll be able to perform a parry. And again, you need only to see the first flashing indicator to perform the parry with the second flashing indicator simply telling you that you have reached the maximum range of your charged attack. 
And a very cool thing about the parry is that you don't actually need to be within the hitbox of the attack. Your parry attack just needs to make contact. You can actually be a little bit farther from the attack. You see that I am still not going to be hit by the attack if I stand right here. But if I time it correctly, I'll still be able to parry because my attack itself did connect with the enemy's attack. So this parry is very important because not only does it allow Narmaya to keep on attacking, dealing damage and getting more butterflies, while at the same time not having to worry about any incoming attacks. Now you've heard me tell you a bunch of times that there is a specific timing that you need to watch out for in order to do this perfect stand swap, to perform that extra attack that then lets you do the quick charge attack and then lets you do that extra combo finisher whenever you swap into blue form. So you really want to land those timings with Armaya to get the most damage output with this character. But there is actually a little bit of a hidden trick that one of my viewers by the name of Marcel Augusto actually showed to me on stream and it's actually pretty crazy. So all you need to do, let's do it with a blue combo because it's easier for me to show you, is just spam the triangle button whenever the indicator shows up. It's not like when you're playing Siegfried or Zeta for example where you need to really watch out for the timings. Here you can straight up spam the triangle button and the game will actually do it for you. So with this you will be able to constantly nail Narmaya's perfect timing by quite simply cheating that mechanic. Now one very important thing with Narmaya is that you're actually able to dash all over the place and maintain your position in the combo. So as I said before if you want to do a fast charged attack you can do it by performing 3 hits of your regular combo. So let's go ahead and do 1, 2. We dash, we still do the third, and we get the fast charging attack combo. Like so. With this, you'll be able to resume your combo from where you had stopped, which will allow you to be much more aggressive with Narmaya. And you can also do this with the blue stance as well. Let's dash here and we're gonna get the flippy attack. And this is just another tool that makes Narmaya such a powerful character. Another very cool thing you can do in Narmaya is when, when you're about to perform a link attack, and you go ahead and press it, you can follow it up by pressing the triangle attack to swap stances and it will count as a perfect stance swap which will give you more butterflies and will then allow you to do the big charged attack or do the extra hit in the blue stance as if you were to swap them perfectly in the middle of a combo. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now let's go over Narmaya's skills. Now Narmaya actually has three different self-buffing skills, with Dance of the Blue Petals granting three immediate butterflies to Narmaya, as well as boosting her defense by 40% and restoring her HP. This skill alone will make her much more sustainable, as this boost in defense will make sure that you don't get one shot by pretty much anything, and getting some extra butterflies while also being able to restore HP is a pretty nice buff. That being said, I do believe that Narmaya has much more appealing skills, like for example, Dance of Pink Petals, which will also grant 3 immediate butterflies to Narmaya, but will also grant her a 30% attack boost, which you may not take advantage of if you are already hitting the damage cap, but of course if you're not there yet you're still going to take benefit from this. Additionally, you gain Stout Heart, which will make all of your attacks uninterruptible, and Stout Heart also grants an innate 20% defense bonus, so that is already quite a powerful buff, and on top of that she also gains supplementary damage. And supplementary damage, in case you don't know, makes it so that whenever you hit an attack, you will be guaranteed to hit an extra proc of damage that will deal 20% of the original's damage. It is by far one of the best ways for you to boost the damage output of a character, as you aren't raising your attack, which is going to eventually be capped by the damage cap, you are quite simply adding extra instances of damage, so you're basically just increasing your damage output by 20%. And her third and final buff is called Utter Devotion, which grants hostility to Narmaya, which is a self-taunt, making enemies more likely to attack her, and will also apply defense down by 25% on all of the nearby enemies, on top of also gaining 3 butterflies. So you can use Utter Devotion as a little bit of a way to make Narmaya somewhat of a tank, although the defense down bonus isn't going to matter a whole lot if you are already hitting the damage cap, and making the enemies more likely to target you isn't really going to change much. And of course you can also cancel a little bit faster out of these skills, although the timing is a little bit tricky on some of these, with the one that's easier to do being Utter Devotion. Now let's take a look at Narmaya's offensive skills. 
The first one being Kyoka Sugetsu, which is this gap closer, which doesn't deal a lot of damage, but of course will deal more damage the more butterflies you have available. And again, with all of these skills, you can then follow up with a fast charged attack. So as you can see, with one butterfly, I deal around 420,000 damage. And with six butterflies, I'm able to deal just over 1 million damage. On the other hand, Crescent Moon is quite the opposite of the gap closer as it pushes you back while at the same time sending a projectile that deals plenty of damage. And again, you can follow it up with a fast charge attack. So with one butterfly, I deal around 200,000 damage, but with six butterflies, I deal about 980,000 damage. Now the next skill is called Transient and it actually has different properties depending on the stance you're using. So with the pink stance you'll be performing this fast attack that hits multiple times and hits in a little bit of a wide area. However in the blue stance Transient will deal much more damage but it's going to be much more focused on a single target and it also is a little bit slower. And again the more butterflies you have the more damage you'll be able to deal. With 6 butterflies on the pink stance, my transient deals just under 1.8 million damage. And with the 6 butterflies during the blue stance, my transient is going to deal a lot more damage, doing just under 3.5 million damage. And of course, if you use dance of the pink petals first, you're going to be dealing a lot more damage. Now the next skill is perhaps Narmaya's most iconic skill, and that is Setsuna, whereby holding down the button, Narmaya will charge up the Setsuna with up to 3 different charges and when you let go of the button, you're going to be dealing tons of damage. As you saw, that was 3 million damage with only a single butterfly. And of course, with 6 butterflies on top, not only does your Setsuna charge much faster the more butterflies you have, but the damage output will of course also increase. Now one very important thing about Setsuna is that if you are charging this up and you see that you are about to get hit, you can go ahead and block to cancel out of it, and you can also go ahead and dodge out of it. Although you won't keep the charge of the Setsuna, you won't spend your skill cooldown, so you don't have to worry about losing it. You can quite simply dodge out of the way, or block an incoming attack. And of course, during lane time, you will be able to have all of your butterflies active, and you will not be spending them whenever you use your skills, and so your Setsuna is going to be able to charge much faster. Now the next skill is called Apex of Nothingness, whereby pressing this Narmaya will adopt a counter stance and if she gets hit in the process she is going to perform a powerful counter that applies a slow on the enemies. Like so. And of course the damage of this skill is going to be increased the more butterflies you have, but the duration of the slow will also be increased. And another cool thing about Apex of Nothingness is that even if you don't counter anything, Narmaya will still end up doing this gap closer that deals plenty of damage. She just won't be applying the slow whenever she does this. And again, as with all of her skills, she is able to follow it up with a much faster charged attack. Now, in my opinion, you will always want to have these three different skills equipped on Armaya just because of how powerful they are. With Setsuna and Transient both dealing tons of damage, and Dance of Pink Petals increasing your damage output by a lot, and also providing you with Stout Heart, which is going to make you more durable, and being able to power through attacks means that you'll be able to deal even more damage. As for the final skill slot, I like to either go with Kyoka Tsugetsu to be able to have a gap closer, although again Armaya's basic attack during the pink stance acts as a little bit of a gap closer, so I don't feel too bad whenever I don't have that equipped. And my second option is to go with Dance of the Blue Petals, just to have one more way to increase my butterfly count, while at the same time increasing my defense and healing myself, so I'm able to always be topped off. And I'll be sure to have more butterflies so that my skills just end up dealing more damage. Now let me show you the gear that I'm running on my endgame Narmaya build. For your weapons, my first recommendation is going to be the critical hit rate weapon, giving you 25 levels of critical hit rate and 15 levels of critical hit damage. The ascension weapon is of course going to be a better option if you fully max it out, but in my opinion you would be better off saving those materials and instead going with the terminus weapon, as this weapon's stats are absolutely insane and it comes with fantastic traits such as sigil booster to raise the level of all of your equipped sigils, damage cap which will help you reach damage cap level 65, 
and of course Catastrophe which will raise your attack by 50% and your damage cap by 100% as long as your HP is at or below 45,000. And then you also get regen level 15 as a nice bonus. As for the overmasteries, my recommendation is always going to be to try to get as much normal attack damage cap and skill damage cap up as possible. As you can see, I have skill damage cap up 20% and normal attack damage cap up 16% and then the rest are all secondary bonuses. And now let's take a look at my sigils. Starting of course with Narmaya's own sigil, with the first one being Butterfly's Grace, which will quite simply grant one more butterfly whenever Narmaya lands a combo finisher or a link attack. This is just going to make it easier for you to max out on the amount of butterflies you can have, so that you deal as much damage as possible whenever you perform a skill. And this sigil complements very well the next one, which is Butterfly's Valor, which is also a very simple one, as it gives you a 50% chance of not consuming your butterflies whenever you perform a skill. So with this, if luck is on your side, you can, for example, use Transient with 6 butterflies, and if you are lucky, you can go ahead and follow it up with the Setsuna, which is going to come out very fast if you did not lose those 6 butterflies. In my opinion, these aren't the best character-specific sigils in the game. They're not as reliable as some others, like for example Eugen's sigil, which quite simply increases the damage of his grenades. These two are a little bit more quality of life additions that are going to make playing Narmaya a lot more comfortable, and if RNG is on your side, you'll be able to do much more damage. Now, as for the rest of the sigils, this is my current Narmaya build. I have three different variations of this one, where I only change a couple of sigils, so let's go over all of that. Starting off with four damage cap sigils. This will of course max out my damage cap, which is the most important trait in the game, you really want to have this maxed out at all times, because otherwise you will be missing out on a lot of damage. This one comes with ages, but as you can see I also have tyranny on my build, so the extra 36% HP that I get from this is just to make me a little bit tankier and to offset the downside of tyranny. The second damage cap sigil comes with quick cooldown, which quite simply is going to reduce my skill cooldown, and with this build I get it at level 32. Ideally you would have this at level 45 to get a 20% skill cooldown reduction, but there are some extra sigils that I think were a bit more important. Like for example improved dodge, which I have on this damage cap sigil, which is going to boost my dodge count to 7 from 3, and my dodges are going to have more iframes, which I value a lot especially with the reduced HP from having tyranny, but more importantly raise my damage cap by 30%, which is going to allow me to deal a lot more damage with the only dodge downside being that whenever I get hit, I will be inflicted with Dizzy, so being able to dodge more often and more reliably is going to be even more important. My Tyranny Sigil comes with quick cooldown, and my Glass Cannon comes with regen, because I frankly don't have anything better. I also have a Crit Rate Sigil because I don't have a lot of Crit Rate on my build, even with this Sigil I only end up at 80% Critical Hit Rate, which is not ideal, and I also have Stamina, which will boost my attack by up to 55% at 100% HP. You might be wondering why I didn't max out Tyranny or Stamina since that's the most traditional way to go about it, but I am able to hit the damage cap as I currently am, and because of my right stone which gives me 4 levels of Stamina, and with an extra level thanks to Sigil Booster, I am able to reach level 20, and combining that with level 16 Tyranny is going to give me a lot of attack. I also have quick charge from my right stone because I value the decreased charge time on Armaya's charged attack and the extra boost to my attack is going to ensure that I hit the damage cap. We of course have War Elemental, which is going to make all of our attacks count as the superior element, so essentially we'll be dealing 20% more damage and this goes above the damage cap, so it is by far one of the best sigils in the entire game. If you do manage to find one, you should always add it to your build. And then there's 3 supplementary damage sigils, which might be a bit of an overkill, as they will ensure that whenever I hit an enemy, I am guaranteed to deal an extra hit that will deal 20% of the original's damage. 
If I were to remove one of these sigils, I would still end up with a 74% chance to trigger this supplementary damage, which is still pretty high so there is some good consideration to replacing this with a critical hit rate sigil, or perhaps a more defensive one, like potent greens, which would allow me to remove any status ailment by consuming a green potion, so I would be able to get rid of the dizzy from the glass cannon, and because I have potion order on my damage cap sigil, I would have even more green potions to be able to use. Now as I said before I do have a couple of variations of this exact same build where with this one I remove the glass cannon sigil and instead I go with an extra tyranny sigil and I either max out quick cooldown or add an extra cascade and with this variation where instead of having glass cannon I have quick charge which would give me a 25% charge time reduction and a larger boost to my attack so it is a little bit more comfortable than the previous build. Narmaya is an absolute beast of a character, by far one of the strongest ones in Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling. In my target dummy test, I was able to reach around 43 million damage in 60 seconds, which is a crazy number, and I've seen people being able to reach 45 million, and on top of being such a strong character, she is very fun to play and offers you a variety of tools to deal with the appropriate situation. And now that I know the trick to master the timing to perfect swap Narmaya's stances, aka just smash the button, she has actually become one of my favorite characters to play in Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling. And honestly, I've been having a hard time to swap out of her and get into the other characters to make more builds for you. So let me know which character I should cover next, and if you are enjoying these build guide videos, please subscribe to the channel for more. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting! Thank you.